All right, well, I am still uh, on my whirlwind tour of museums in Washington, D.C. Right now, I am at the Smithsonian Museum of the American Indian. Uh, right off the bat, I'm really impressed with the kind of earthy feel of, of this place, at least on the exterior. Lots of waterfalls and rocks and buildings made to look kind of like sandstone. Um, I don't know what to expect going in here. I've never been to this museum before, but uh, looking forward to jumping in there and uh, seeing what we can learn. finally figured out how to get inside and uh, yeah we're gonna see what we got here all right so this is close to the front end of the museum just walked in and uh, this is a pipe tomahawk that is said to have belonged to Chief Joseph so that's pretty cool and then just behind that is a James Madison peace medal and then behind them both is something called, oh gosh, an Anishinaabe? Anishinaabe? Ball-headed war club? Go ahead and just prepare that I'm probably going to be mispronouncing a lot of things throughout this tour. Alright, well, this is telling me to start my visit at the theater on the fourth level. So who am I to go against how the people designed it? So I guess we're going up to the fourth floor first. got a few minutes before my film introduction starts but this is a Yupik mask from a tribe up in Alaska called the Yupik. This is new to me and uh, I guess this mask was intended to heal someone who was sick. And some moose mittens also from Alaska. Look warm but not very functional. Well, unless it's to keep your hands warm, but as far as gripping anything, I think it'd be difficult. Colorful, though. Okay, well, I just got done watching the film. I uh, wasn't allowed to video in there, which is fine, but the, the film is really cool. Um, kind of a multi-sensory experience. There was stuff going on above us, literally below us, on the screen in front of us. Um, talked about the different tribes and some of their traditions. Uh, so this first exhibit that we're gonna go into is called Our Universes. And uh, it's looking at, I think, seven distinct tribes and uh, how they believe the, uh, the world was created and then has some artifacts in there. So go check it out. Okay, the first one is looking at the Capovi, which is the Pueblo of Santa Clara. Should see some familiar stuff in here from uh, our visit to the Manitou Cliff Dwellings. And of course the, uh, the Pueblo are well known for their pottery. So here's some examples uh, from the late 1800s here. So this is kind of something interesting that I didn't know. For the Pueblo, um, the different mountain ranges surrounding them represented different things. So to the north, they had the Seishupin Shimmering Mountains that represented birth. And then to the east were the Stone Man Mountains, which represented youth. To the south were the Turtle Mountains, which represented the third stage of life, which is adulthood. See some of the things there. Some more pottery. And then to the west, the Obsidian Covered Mountains which represented the completion of the life cycle. All right, next is the Anishinaabe. That's the pronunciation I'm gonna roll with for right now until I learn different. 
uh, but these are people that were around the Great Lakes region and Canada. So this is interesting. Um, the Anishinaabe have this belief that uh, people were suffering because they had stopped listening to their creator and then uh, this individual that they call little boy decides to go looking for ways to help his people so he starts walking to the east to the north the south the west and all along the way the creator sends animals to teach him lessons about survival and healing and things like that and then he takes it back to his people interesting so kind of continuing on with that the uh, the animals that speak to little boy are the seven grandfathers that have seven teachings and they take the form of these animals and they teach all these different things like wisdom love respect courage honesty humility and each animal teaches him a different thing hmm and uh, here's a drum from the Anishinaabe. They say that the drum beat represents the heartbeat of Mother Earth. Okay, this next one is one that I'm a little bit more familiar with, and that is the Lakota people. This would be Great Plains region. All right, so it's pretty dark in here, so hopefully the quality doesn't suffer too much. But this is a Lakota buffalo headdress. I've never seen anything like this before. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, and then also a drum. And then here's a little child's toy buffalo to help teach children about the importance of buffalo to the Lakota people and the Lakota culture. Now this thing here uh, is called a roach, which I had never heard of before. It's a headdress that's made out of porcupine quills. These, uh, these are all items that were used in Lakota ceremonies, where they would do different rituals to uh, reach out to the, the spirits for different reasons. All right, next is the Hoopa people, which I've never heard of before. This is the uh, region of like Northwest California. So it says here that the Hoopa call themselves, oh my dear heavens, um, Kawinyanyanan? Oh gosh, I don't know. Uh, anyway, it translates to uh, acorn eaters, which is interesting. So just in the same way that the Pueblo take corn and kind of grind it. Uh, the Hoopa people do the same thing with acorns. It says they pray a lot for fish and deer and for the world to be balanced. There's an old spear. And uh, this is kind of what a Hoopa American Indian would look like. Interesting. I didn't know anything about this culture. Another thing that seems to be really important to the Hoopa people is this thing called a jump dance, where they drive away bad things and sing and stomp on the ground and pray that everything bad goes away. So this is some traditional dress of the Hoopa. All right, getting ready to go look at some stuff for the Yupik. Uh, these are people that are natives to Alaska. All right, and here are a few Yupik items. Uh, some snowshoes, basket. What's really interesting to me is this coat here, uh, or a little parka, that's made out of seal gut. Hmm. That was really quite interesting. Um, learned quite a bit about some cultures that I didn't even know existed, to be honest with you. Uh, I find it interesting that it seems like in every culture, not just in the United States and in, uh, the, the native cultures of America, but all over the world, there's always some sort of creation story. And there's always you know, rituals to you know, appeal to a god or a higher power. Um, it's, it's almost as if it's hardwired in our DNA to worship. Um, I don't know, just something interesting that I was thinking about as I was going through that exhibit. So this is kind of interesting. This is a bronze statue 
commemorating the alliance between the Oneida Indian Nation and George Washington during the American Revolution. And the woman there, I've never heard this story, somebody named Skinandoa, also known as Polly Cooper, who came to the aid of Washington and his troops when uh, they were starving at Valley Forge. I'll have to look that up. So these are all belts or sacred badges of friendship that uh, represent peace agreements between different Native American groups and the uh, white settlers. And this one in particular was used to, on the bottom, uh, was used by the British Indian Department to recruit Native allies before the War of 1812. So these range and some of them are all the way back to the 1600s. Wow. These are different gifts from England, France, and Spain, and the U.S. that were presented to Native American leaders, like this Mohawk pipe tomahawk from around 1750. Wow. Here's a pipe stem from around the late 1700s, early 1800s. These were all things that were given to uh, promised Native Americans that their sovereignty would be maintained. Here's a George II peace medal on the right. Wow. Oh, I'm sorry. George II peace medal is on the left. George III peace medal is on the right. It would be from about 1790. Holy smokes. This is a collection that encompasses the Treaty of New Echota from 1835. This is the treaty that laid the groundwork for the Trail of Tears. And you can see there's the signature of Andrew Jackson. Wow. These are, uh, this, this treaty is only being displayed for a short amount of time in order to preserve it. But that is interesting. Uh, here are some more ceremonial gifts. Some peace medals. This one at the top is a Thomas Jefferson peace medal. And then here is a George Washington peace medal on the left. A uh, pipe from William Henry Harrison, who later became president for like a few days. Um, there's a James Madison peace medal, and a John Quincy Adams peace medal. Hmm. Look at this. This is a Cheyenne painting from the late 1800s telling the story of the Battle of Little Bighorn. Wow. That is pretty cool. Uh, these different sections of the museum really do a good job of showing the conflicting viewpoints of the Native Americans and of the United States. Uh, kind of showing the uh, uh, really a, a fair depiction of the, the conflict involved. Very, very well done here. I'm not going to address every single incident that they go over here in the museum, although all of them are interesting. Um, but here's one for the California Gold Rush. And again, they do a really good job of showing the viewpoints of the Native Nations versus the viewpoint of the United States in each one of these conflicts. So whether it's, you know, California and gold, or whether it was uh, moving into the... Uh, planes or you know whatever they they really do a good job going back and forth showing these differing viewpoints and uh, highlighting the uh, the clash of these cultures of course we have our rule that anytime we see a gun we have to film it especially when it's Andrew Jackson's pistol and then here kind of wrapping up this section this kind of focuses on how in the 1900s the U.S. honored 
at least some of their promises to uh, the Native Americans. Very interesting. Okay, well that was the National Museum of the American Indian. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that place and learned a lot while I was in there. Um, I have other videos that explore different parts of Native American culture. One at Sand Creek, um, be another one coming up on the Trail of Tears. But this was the uh, National Museum of the American Indian at the Smithsonian. Definitely worth the visit, you'll learn a lot. Nothing important here. I'm just filming in case that kid falls in. 